Hi, Chris. How are you today? Good. How are you doing, Yves? Fine, fine, fine. We have uh, a strange topic today. Uh, well, quantum. We have an awesome topic today. Lots of topics. You, 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 you are scaring me. I prepared some sugar to be sure that I will right. be able to follow. Uh, so quantum consistency. Why quantum do we Quantum consistency. Quantum consistency. That's new to me. All right. So the event store is a database, right? And what is the, what's the magic power of databases in general? Um, indexing. Nope. No, oh, come on. They, they, they hold data forever? <laughs> nope. Uh, uh, if it's not indexing, um, they, they can create numbers. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, man. Tra tell I'll me, hear. tell me, tell me, please. Transactional consistency. Transactional consistency, yeah. I can stop the world. I can, you know, I'm in a movie, I hit the pause button. You know, I'm the flash, I move things around, I hit go. Yeah. And everybody thinks changed, right? And, you know, think about what, what it looked like in the world before databases, right? You're running an app, and what do you got? You got a file system, you've got memory, right? And you've got, as soon as you don't have one thread doing everything, right? And you've got different files you're saving all your data and you've got a problem. Yep. Because what if this thread over here is changing the file and this thread's reading it, but you really need to change two things. And you want to change both things, but they're separate before anyone else can look at them. Yep. Right? Um, so how do we do that, right? And we know in um, a lot of the work that we do now, as we've been forced back into it in distributed systems, that there's ways of sequencing it and doing the changes and then flipping the last bit, but it's not straightforward. It's not like, hey, write to the database, right? And where transactions are gonna get a state change. And, you know, and that's why everyone's like, well, is it read committed? Is it, you know, can I get a torn read or a torn write? Or yep. that's why they care because they want to be able to trust and just forget about any dating in the code because your code is so much simpler. The world is so much easier if you can just, you know, trust that, you know, everything changes, it all changes at once and everything after that is fine. Yep. Right? And we've talked about turning the database inside out and doing all this stuff and there's a write ahead log, right? So what is that write ahead log really doing? It's, linearizing the change requests and then the change requests are applied in atomic fashion to the data set and really in a modern database there's multiple files and file sections right and all of those are going to be updated right and everybody's going to get blocked all they're all going to be updated and then we're going to release and then everyone's going to be able to read yeah. right and, and one of the major tricks of databases is uh, and we don't really care what type of database is that they do that really fast and yes right and, and so then uh, indexes are the i'd say the second you know they're the real key indexes are the are sort of the soul of the database in my mind because how you index the data determines how you can access it yep. and how you can store it and it's why you know, corporate hierarchy is really, really simple in a graph database and kind of sucks in a relational database. And you see those tables, those giant tables with A, double A, double B, double C, and it's all just there for the joint. Yep. It's got nothing to do with your data. It's all a complete artifact of the indexing structure in the data store. Right. When I explain those things to people, I'm, I'm always, when there are the difference between uh, a relational or document of something, I'm, I'm always telling tell them there's two things you need to consider is uh, the, the, the structure, uh, maybe one thing, the, the structure they provide to, mm -hmm. to model your, your data and the way you access it. Right. Yep. And those two generally go hand in hand. Yep. Right. How you model the data, how you access it are are handed in. But the biggest thing is this, this transactional consistency, 
right? The challenge with the relational database is that, you know, it's a, there's only one, right? Even if you're replicating the one thing, it's not distributed, it's local. Yep. You may have a lot of things talking to it. You can only scale that up so much, right? And that's why it doesn't really make the leap in the cloud. And the reason it doesn't make the leap in the cloud is once we get into the cloud, we have to deal with time, right? Because it takes time for information to get in. Here's where we're going to get all physics. In. It takes time to propagate information from one place to another. And as soon as we're dealing with distributed, you know, programming, right? Distributed systems, we have to acknowledge this reality. Yep. All of a sudden, our programming has to deal with the fact that there's time and there's propagation. And furthermore, propagation failures, propagation, you know, repeated propagation. You know, we don't know. It's something we sent, got delivered. So there's this uncertainty and time and propagation all just show up, right? And forcing everyone back to this one place. And so one of the ways I think about it is a relational database has this amazing transactional consistency. But when you think about it with time, they only have now, uh -huh. right? There's no, there's no history. There's no time sequence. All they have is now. Right. And that's, that's what they've got. And then there's some people, you know, once you think that's okay, well, we'll start using clocks. Right. And normally when they, when they first, your first thought when you're using clocks to talk about doing this, and I've seen very powerful systems that are, they're that trying to get this to work. They use wall clocks, right. They use actual time. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, You've got to, I, you know, a lot of people, yeah, I was surprised when I found this out. Do you know that the quantum relativity effects on clocks need to be considered in GPS? Yes, I know. Because the satellites are moving. <laughs> you, so the clocks and the satellites and the clocks on the ground don't line up. You promised me we wouldn't talk about quantum physics. <laughs> That's relativity. That's what I'm going to talk about relativity. Yeah, okay, and, that, that's all right. <laughs> Well, we're going to get in there. Well, so now we're going to jump into quanta. <laughs> yeah. Right. There, there, there's one thing, by the way, I need to tell. If people rely on timestamps to order things and, and then th and think that the timestamp is only increasing in time, uh, think about daylight, summertime, and um, right. because time right. goes forward and backwards at least two times a year. And right. also when the server is actually synchronizing its own clock with an NTP server. Exactly. So time can move. Time, you know, the wall time in the server, you can't trust. Yeah. So do you know what the, uh, you know, the technical definition of quanta is? <sighs> um, the that's just... Yep. Okay. So what it says is that it's not a linear, smooth thing, like a wall clock, which is, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a quanta. There's a minimum value. And for us, that's a message. Yep. And the type of messages we care about are events. Yep. Because we divide the world into messages that are, there's a bunch of types, but the fundamental commands, which are requests and events, which are facts or things that happen. Yep. So the, the quanta in the quantum consistency is events, right? Because what we're going to do is we're not going to use a wall clock. We're going to use a logical clock, right? And we're just going to start counting. And so our, the, in the, the counting we're going to do is on the quanta, right, which is the events. Yep. So we're going to have a stream of events in time, and that is going to become our clock positions. Yeah. So the first event, the second, the third one, the fourth one, and so on right. and so on. And what quantum consistency is about taking this concept of now and spreading it out as it propagates through a distributed system, right? And what we're going to say is that for any quanta, 
for any level position, right? Every system that's at that position will be consistent with every other system at that position. Now that's because we're doing um, something a little bit stronger, uh, but it's called monotonic um, prefix consistency. Let me see if I can pull that paper up here. Um, now we're our guarantees. So this is a paper that talks about how monotonic prefix consistency is the strongest consistency available, right? Now, I, I think they're slightly wrong here because um, I think atomic prefix consistency is stronger, right? Because monotonic only says that the numbers must be higher. Yeah. But what we do in event store is we increment the numbers atomically. So we did, you mean right. we have no gaps? We have no gaps, which means that any node can know. So if, if you have gaps, you don't know if you've seen everything up to a point. Yep. And that requires you to distribute complete state. So if I'm doing monotonic consistency and I'm shipping complete state, then I can know with absolute certainty that where I am is the most consistent. Yep. However, we don't want to ship complete state. Complete state is giant. It's huge. You know, it's why people are always like, well, how can you do this and call it a database? You're going to blow out your, your storage. I ship so much data around on Kafka or Kinesis or RabbitMQ. You wouldn't, you know, there's no way we could store it. Right? And we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to ship a third normal form delta based what changed. But you can't trust that having seen what changed will get you to current state unless you have an atomic increment, you know, atomic increments. Yep. So I know if I'm at position 10,032, I've seen 10,032 events or quanta. Yep. Right. And now I can know that every other consumer in my entire system that's at 10,032 is at the same exact state. They're all consistent with each other. And furthermore, because we have an immutable history, we know that it's not ever going to go in down. State 10,032 is consistent for all time everywhere, right? That quanta is consistent across my entire system. Mm -hmm. And this becomes really important when I need to synchronize different things. What if I have a server that, that fell down? How do I get it back in sync with everything else, right? We say, oh, get in sync. And everyone thinks, well, we have to get it back up to now. But in a distributed system, there is no now. Now does not exist. But once we start thinking in terms of quantum consistency and we can put a position on the quanta, now we have a now. Yep. <laughs> right? I need it to be consistent with where everybody else is. Right? And this is what starts to simplify things tremendously. Because now we're back at that position of a transactional consistency. I mean, now we have a distributed transactional consistency, right? We're actually distributed quanta consistency, right? Yep. And this also has tremendous impact, not just on the, on the eventual consumers, but on the producers, right? Because one of the things that we absolutely want to make sure is that when we're writing current state, that we, when we're changing state, we, are, we have what no one now is. So we want those producers to go back to the most current now. And so by delegating 
that consistency check from the producer to the store. So we now have one system that is linearizing all of our requests, linearizing all of our state changes, producing a new now and then distributing, right? And so we can do our commits there, drop them in the linear chain, right? And my I can check to say, well, here's what I thought now was when I made this decision. Yep. Is that still the most current now? If it is the most current now, do this, right? And so there's a couple of things that all of a sudden, well, now we're talking about locking again, kind of, but there are a couple of important things here. One, the linearization, as we talked about, is already present in any high-speed, high-scale database you're dealing with. The write-ahead log in the database is a linearization of requests. So we're doing the same linearization as you get in Oracle or SQL Server or any other database. The other thing that we need to do now is, you know, we talk about, you know, people talk about locking and consistency, right? And it's, it's really important. And one of the big challenges is that if you want to do this optimistic locking on a broad spectrum of things, you're going to have a lot of retries. You're going to have a lot of failures, right? So what we do in event store is we lock on the stream, which is the finest green lock you can do. It's equivalent to a row level lock in a relational database, right? And so we do this row level locking, right, on a stream to update now in that stream. And then the order in which that stream is changed now becomes the position in the global stream. Yep. Right, and that global stream is our consistency echo going out, giving us our distributed or quantum consistency. Over across the log then. Right. Yep. So that log and that mechanism provides a useful, um, fast, effective, distributed consistency. Yep. And, and provides that's the most powerful benefit of Event Store that I've not found in any other systems. Yeah, and provides a clock as well. I mean, a, right. a logical clock. Right, because because that's what you need. You can't do this without a logical clock. You can't do this without quanta, right? And, you know, but once you... And the thing is, is that you don't need to, to fully understand this and, and to use it. That's why people never go back. <laughs> once, you know, once people have started using it, I, I, any, I don't know anyone that's implemented a successful system that's gone, oh, no, I never want to do that again. I know a couple of people who were like, well, didn't do quite everything I wanted. So I'm doing this other thing because I'm missing X or Y. But that is the strongest deviation. You know, I can get close enough somewhere else. Yep. Uh, but I've never seen anyone actually, I don't want to use this anymore. Yep. I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> so that's quantum consistency. That's, that's the core of the, that's why event store is the database for the distributed system, enterprise, whatever. It's an operational store that gives you a distributed consistency. Yeah, uh, and I would say we one day need to uh, show people how all kinds of interesting application patterns that you can begin to use with that. Yeah. Because there's, there's yeah, a we, lot we of things, things you can do which are really right. amazing. And the biggest thing is, is that you can do those things simply. Yeah, right? yeah, I yeah. Mean, they're, they're technically possible without that consistency. The same way running a local app that put every, imagine if you had a file for every table and you had a local app that was doing its data management with a file for every table. You can do it. You can absolutely do it. You can make it work. But so much pain, so much headache, right? Why would you ever do it when there's something so much simpler and better available at your fingertips? Yep, right. Thanks. That was um, right. a simple explanation of a complex topic. Uh, not not simple. Um, 
simply said, but it's no. not simple. You get what I mean. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right. Bye. Bye.